Okay, in this video, we're going to do 8.3, um, showing that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so a parallelogram a is a quadrilateral um, with whoops, both pairs of opposite sides congruent. Okay, so here are the theorems again. If both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so that's theorem 8.7, because I'm going to ask you to use these theorems. Okay, theorem 8.8 .8 coming at you. If both pairs of opposite angles, so it has to be both pairs, of a quadrilateral, and this was both pairs as well, are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so you need both sets of angles or both sets of sides being congruent. Okay, so let's go on to the next page or the next part of the notes. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral, so here's one pair, are congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral <clears throat> is a parallelogram. Okay, see, one pair is congruent and parallel. I don't have any information about the other pair. So that is not that. So what's that supposed to be? I'll have to come back and fix this later. Okay, so that is, um, hmm. Okay, so we're going to leave that be. If, a, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are what? What will they do? If they bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so they have to bisect each other to make that true. So you have to have information about both sets. Okay, let's go on to the next page of notes. Okay, here they're going to give us some examples now. An amusement park ride has a moving platform attached to four swinging arms. The platform swings back and forth, higher and higher, until it goes over the top and around in a circular motion. In the diagram, segments AD, so AD is the 16-foot segment right there, and BC, which is the other 16-foot segment, represent two of the swinging arms, and segment DC, so DC is right here, is parallel to the ground. Explain why the moving platform AB is always parallel to the ground. Okay, so how come that is the case? So let's think about that for a second. So since, what do we know here? Don't we know that the sides are opposite each other are equal. If they're all equal, then that's a parallelogram. And if it's a parallelogram, by definition, this is always going to be parallel to the ground. Okay? So it's because the fact that you have congruent sides, that's how you know it's going to be parallel to the, to the ground. So once you establish the fact that you have a parallelogram, you're good to go. So what theorem was that, by the way? So that was theorem 8.7, parallelograms and opposite sides. Okay, so that's theorem 8.7 up here. Okay, identify a parallelogram. The doorway shown is part of a building in England. Over time, the building has leaned sideways. Explain why you know that SV equals TU. Okay, so look what you're given up here. You have one pair of this quadrilateral that are parallel and congruent. So if you have one pair that's parallel and congruent, then you know it's a parallelogram. If it's a parallelogram, then by definition, 
all the opposite sides are equal to each other. So SV will have to equal TU because now they're part of a parallelogram. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, use algebra with parallelograms. For what value of x is quadrilateral CDEF a parallelogram? Okay, so for it to be a parallelogram, we're going to talk about the theorem that pertains to diagonals. The diagonals have to bisect each other. This pair already does, because I see the little hash marks. So therefore, this 3x has to equal 5x minus 8. So 3x equals 5x minus 8. And once you do all your math, you're going to find, okay, we'll, we'll just do it together. I'm going to add 8 over here, add 8 over here. So I have 8 plus 3x equals 5x. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I get 2x, divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get x equals 4. So if x equals 4, then that shape qualifies as a parallelogram. Okay, so let's go on to the extra practice page. So here's your extra practice. The figure shows part of a stair railing. Explain how you know the support, the support bar segments MP and NQ are parallel. So how do you know that? Well, if this equals this and this equals this, that is enough to tell me that I have a parallelogram. So therefore, the pieces are parallel. Okay, and that's theorem 8.7 tells me that I have a parallelogram. Okay, so I have a parallelogram. Since MN equals PQ and MP equals NQ. Okay, that makes it a parallelogram. Okay, next question. Suppose you place two straight narrow strips of paper of equal length on top of two lines of a sheet of note paper, notebook paper. If you draw a segment to join their left ends and a segment to join their right ends, will the resulting figure be a parallelogram? So let's see, narrow strips of paper of equal length. So they're telling you this is equal, this is equal. Okay, so you're, you put it on top of the lines of the sheet of a notebook paper. Okay, so those lines are parallel. So I have one pair of um, parts of, the, of this quadrilateral. So I know that AB equals CD. And I also know, because they're on that notebook paper, that their guys are parallel. Since I have the rule that they're equal and parallel, I know that the resulting shape is going to be a parallelogram. Okay? So that's your extra practice. We've got one more to go. For what value of x is quadrilateral RSTU a parallelogram? Okay, so this has to do with 8.10, which is parallelograms and diagonals. So I see that this equals this, and therefore, for it to be a parallelogram, the other diagonal must be bisected as well. So set those two pieces equal to each other. Moving things around. I am getting, if x equals 8, then it will be a parallelogram. Okay, so now you should be able to do the homework.